Welcome to H2K Infosys. H2K Infosys is a e-verify business based in Atlanta, Georgia, United States. We provide 100% job-oriented, instructor-led, face-to-face, true live online software training programs. It also includes access to Cloud Test Lab with software tools. We provide live project for you to work on. We also provide assistance with mock interviews, resume preparation and review, and job placement assistance. H2K Infosys is trusted by so many students across the world. H2K Infosys provides world-class services in IT training with real-time project work for corporates and individuals, special IT training for MS students in the United States, software design development, QA manual and automation, performance testing and maintenance, IT staff augmentation, job placement assistance and tech support. simple one okay you can go ahead explain it and you can okay, give a different uh, uh, ID okay so if the login if you are giving TC001 fund yes, transfer you yes, can give yes. two and this one you can give three okay so that we understand it better All right. Um, here I have given the project name as account summary, and uh, the main purpose is to look for the account summary in the uh, accountees web page. And you're going to type in the Bank of America URL. And so I have made the precondition as um, opening the bank web page um, by typing in the URL uh, in the address part of the browser, and it's going to display the online ID text box and then you're going to enter the online ID, valid online ID and click on the sign in button and then it goes to the passcode page. So here it's going to display the, the accounts and the bill pay and the transfer. Um, when it comes to the accounts page, um, I see that um, in my Bank of America website it just shows the account, uh, the balance just in the web page. So, I didn't have to go for the account um, summary. Okay, so this is what you can see it by default, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, but I guess there is something that is account summary tab over there, correct? Is there I don't have the accounts tab. tab. Mm -hmm. There's accounts tab, and then under that you have the uh, accounts uh, history. It doesn't say summary there. Okay, then you can write it for account history only. Okay, because okay. the different banks uh, they you know give the different names, right? So you can mm -hmm. give it as um, the account detail summary, whatever is available there. Okay, but make sure you click on that tab and you got to, you know, mention how it's going to behave. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So Rushali uh, has a question. Do we have to make the different functionalities as a different test case? Yes. One functionality, one test case, one sheet. Okay. Okay, I think Jyoti and uh, Rushali had the same question. Yeah, this is all. Okay, then all right. We will come back to my screen. And thanks everybody for sharing your documents. I hope it is useful for everybody else here. Correct? Okay. Sure, Jyoti. You can prepare it and send it to me. I would be, you know, very happy to see your documents. Okay? Please send it, Jyoti. Okay, so the next thing that we have is the defect life cycle. So let's understand the defect life cycle. Whenever you see the defect over here and you have marked it as fail, right? Now you got to report this defect to the developer. And to report the defect to the developer, we are going to use a tool called as Quality Center. And I will show you how to do the defect reporting when we take up that tool. Okay, for now let's try to understand what is this defect life cycle. So we had software development life cycle, we had a software testing life cycle, 
we now have a defect life cycle. Can anybody try to define it? You know what is STLC? You know what is software testing life cycle? Now it is a life cycle of a defect. Can you define it? Somebody? Can you please try to make an attempt? Yes. Try it. No, Alan, we are not uh, creating the defects. Okay. Can we say that the different phases that the defect goes through? Okay. Can we say that the different phases through which a defect is going to go through? What is uh, development life cycle, the different phases of the development? Testing life cycle, the different phases of the testing? Defect life cycle, the different um, phases of the defect. Simple um, definition, right? Okay. So now let's try to understand. I think everybody can see. Okay. The defect life cycle. Okay. So whenever we see the defect for the uh, first time, the new defect, okay, we got to, you know, put it under the status called as new defect. Sorry. Okay, we got to write it as a new defect. Okay, and then after marking it as a new defect, we got to assign it to the concerned developer. Okay, we got to assign to the developer. I know what is your question. In case you do not know who is the developer who is developing this, you can assign it to your team lead. He will take care of it. Okay, if you know which is the developer, I mean, sorry, who is the developer who is working on this defect, you can directly assign to the developer. If you do not know who is the developer who is working on this model module, put it to your team lead and he will take care of it. Okay. Now after you mark the defect as new and you assign it to the developer and then now the developer will be able to see the defect. He will mark it in the status called as open. Okay. He will put it in the open status and the moment you see that the status has got updated to open you should understand that your developer is working on it clear everybody the moment you see that the developer has put it into the open status you are going to understand he is working on it in order to fix the defect okay next after this okay he is going to put it in the status called as fixed Means when he finishes the working on the defect, means the defect fixing process is over, he will put it in the status called as fixed. Clear everybody? Now the moment it is in the fixed status, you should understand that you are supposed to do the regression testing on that defect. Correct? And what is regression testing? Verifying whether the developer has fixed the defect properly or not. And after the regression testing is over and you are confirmed that the defect is fixed properly by the developer, you got to put it in the closed status. Is this clear everybody? So first new defect, we mark it as new defect. And then the developer is going to mark it into the open status. You should understand he's working on it. If it goes to the fixed status, then you got to understand that, okay, the defect is fixed by the developer. And then we do the regression testing on the fixed defect and we mark it as closed. Clear everyone? Then, in case he is not ready to agree that it is a defect, he will mark it in the rejected status. He is not ready to agree that, you know, whatever you have reported as a defect, it's not a defect. I mean, it's a defect. He is, you know, trying to disagree there. He will put it in the rejected status. In that case, what you got to do is, you got to have a discussion with him. Okay. And if you feel that it is a defect, try to convince him that this is a defect. And for the convincing, you are not just going to, you know, argue with him that it is a defect. You got to produce all the requirement documents. You should show him, okay, based on this requirement, you know, the functionality is not behaving as per this expectation. You can also mention to him the requirement ID. Look at the requirement ID number FR006 or 7. And as per that requirement, this is not 
you know behaving as per the expectation so that is why we have marked it as a defect it has to be fixed okay and then you got to set up a discussion with him to you know try to uh, make him understand that it is a defect in case you have done a mistake over there in marking it as a defect you can accept it okay there is no harm in it basically you both have to discuss over here and arrive at a conclusion that whether it is a defect or not if you conclude that it is a defect it goes to the open status if it is not a defect it will stay here in the rejected status clear and never ever try to enter into the argument okay argument is not required i mean nobody owns the software there the purpose both of you are working there is to make sure you give the quality software to the client so never ever say that okay i am correct you are wrong we should not try to enter into the argument if in case you both are unable to solve it you have a confusion there okay then you can take the assistance of your team lead or you can also contact your business analyst for the more information so that you arrive at some conclusion clear everybody okay so you got to discuss and solve the issue there is one status okay which is not very frequently used it is very uncommon then also i want to you know uh, mention to you it is the deferred status okay deferred or postponed means currently the developer is working on the different high priority task and you know he puts it in the postponed status means he is going to work on it but he will be working it sometime later okay so we call it as a deferred or the postponed status all right this is a very less frequent thing that we will use in most of the projects we don't go for it okay and then in case in future let's say 3 months later or some 4 months later we are trying to do some modifications in the code okay some code changes are being done and then it is um, affecting any of the functionality and the old defect is going to reopen again we had fixed it but it has again reopened we will put it in the reopen status and then assign it back to the developer okay we are going to reassign it to the developer okay and he is supposed to fix it clear everybody is this defect testing cycle sorry defect life cycle clear new defect then the developer will put it to the open status you should understand he is working fixed status means it is fixed and you got to do the regression testing and then it goes to the closed status okay he can also reject the defect in case of the rejection you got to discuss with him and try to conclude whether it is a defect or not if it's defect it goes back to the open otherwise it stays there itself okay a very less commonly used status not used in most of the projects okay it is a deferred or postponed status in case the developer is not available to fix that defect right away he'll put it in the deferred status and in case the same defect is going to reappear in future due to some or the other reason we put it in the reopen status reassign it to the developer and he will start fixing it okay is it clear uh, shukla i repeated it reopening means in future okay let's say we are doing some code changes and uh, it has affected the some different functionality okay and that is the reason it has again reopened so we will mark it in the reopen status okay yeah then now the defect reporting is done and then you know we take it and then we fix it make sure all the defects are closed okay so this is going to continue and when all the defects are closed all the testing is over now what we got to end our testing process correct wouldn't you if regression testing fails okay we are going to reassign sorry if the okay one second let me read his question for everybody okay what if the regression testing fails if the regression testing fails we are going to assign it back to the developer okay we are going to mark it as reopen assign it back to the developer again we will not send it to the closed status okay what if the yes divya also had a same question i think this is answer all right okay next now when all these things are over we prepared the test design we did the testing and then um, defect reporting defect tracking everything is over all the defects are fixed okay now your software is in a very good condition it is ready to be sent to the client okay and it is a time for us to stop our testing process also 
all right because we are not going to continue it for a lifetime we have to end our testing process so that your project goes live means into the production okay and then we got to decide whether to stop it or not we call it as the exit criteria okay a decision has to be made is it a right time that we can stop the testing process and this is nothing but exit criteria we call it as okay and how do you know that you know you have to exit the testing process what is the criteria that you got to consider in order to exit the testing process okay the criteria is so many of our students have given testimonials on how our training programs are you will find them on kudzu.com and on our website h2kinfosys.com on our website h2kinfosys.com you will also find more detailed information on who we are the courses that we offer what each course covers also if you're interested in a demo program please register on our home page on the left hand side just give us more information about yourself and we will send you a link for a demo class the demo class is absolutely free experience our commitment by just attending an orientation workshop at no cost our team of faculty and advisors are here to guide you with the right information If you still have more questions please feel free to call us call us at 770 777 this is a united states number if you're calling from the uk call us at 020 337 you can also email us at training at h2kinfosys.com or h2kinfosys at gmail.com Thank you for watching our videos. We wish you a great career in information technology.